But I did tell him about the point. Did I tell you about the pointer? I did. I told him about the pointer before, like, 20 minutes ago. It's true. It's yep. there. Georgia, we've had a, a hearing for the, uh, the NRAD one in the Cloud Street. Yeah, they are not on the agenda. Right. So we don't have to vote to continue it? Uh, no. Because he's already, well, yeah, sorry. We're going to, no, we have. Establish that Vanessa is there. Yeah, so that, ugh, Vanessa, can you hear me now? Okay, she can now. My yes, microphone is muted. Can you hear me? Yeah, she can hear us. Hear her. The applicants for um, 51 Pickering Street are going to be joining virtually, I believe. Can you hear me, George? Is anyone from your team joining virtually? Okay. And then um, one, the wetland um, scientist is going to join for two lake view. They'll be virtual. We'll have a hybrid mix there because we'll also have um, members in the audience. <clears throat> oh, I'm, uh, I'm so yeah, can you hear me, Georgia? Actually. Yeah, yep, yeah, I can hear you. Great, thank you. You know, I don't think we're hooked up to the the full audio yet. So once we hook up to cable, um, things may change. So let me know if you can't hear anything after we go live. Okay, we'll do. Awesome, thank you. Oh, I've heard about that. That's immediately. Uh, uh, can you yeah. So, so we have a bunch of days again, and it's okay now. It started. You didn't eat for two days, but it started eating this morning. You know, yeah, you got him in time. All the best. I didn't know that. Know. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's around Easter. All these paths start coming. Easter lilies. It's not. It, it, it's any part of the plant. All in. That's so. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. The end of like instant removal up here. Yeah. I know. I don't know if we have some rabbits. Yeah, except for terriers. I've already had a rabbit. They're like, oh, meet yourself. Yeah, that's a good turkey. Well, okay. How many do you have? A couple of. Oh, there's one that came last year who kept seeing himself. In Valerie's oh, car. Oh, oh, would he like a t packet? Yeah. Yeah, well, they probably in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. There's a flock yeah, that hangs yeah. in the cemetery. Uh, Peter. Peter. Oh my Steve King's going to be joining virtual as well. Yeah, when I. Doing a little test. I had my computer. Yeah. So they went in another direction. Well, they couldn't. Yeah, we'll write down that at any point. Okay, that's right. Yeah, that's going to be this way. 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 Yeah, that's going to be this way
Okay, yeah, I'm good to go for it. Peter, if you're ready, it sounds like the cat's ready. Good evening. Welcome to the Chamber's Meeting for uh, April 28th, 2022. Uh, we operate under the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, and Chapter 26 of the Town of Danvers General Bylaws, the Wetlands Protection Bylaw. After each applicant has presented his or her request and the board has had time to ask questions and discuss the project, we will accept questions from the audience. Because this is a public meeting, it is required by law that you give your name and address first. Although we may disagree on the issues raised, all persons present during this meeting are expected to be civil to all other meeting attendees. This includes the members of the commission, staff, abutters, concerned citizens, and property owners and project applicants. We also request that you can confine your questions to the project and only as it pertains to the Wetlands Act. We cannot handle, nor do we have jurisdiction regarding such things as noise or traffic. All problems not related to the Wetlands Protection Act and to the Town of Danvers Wetlands Protection Bylaw must be taken up with the other appropriate boards. Uh, moving to our agenda, our first item is a roll call. Peter Wilson is present. Vanessa Curran. Present. Chelsea King. Present. Anne McGill. Present. And Michael Splain. Yeah. Uh, the first item on our agenda tonight is a uh, notice of intent for 2 Lakeview Ave. The DEP file number is 14-1383. The applicant is the Town of Danvers, um, represented by Stephen King. Stephen, I understand you're with us virtually. I saw him. Hi, good evening, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Yes, we can. Hello. Hi. Hi, is, how, how is everyone doing? Um, Thank you for uh, hearing tonight. Uh, my name is Steve King, town engineer for the Danvers Engineering Division. Um, and for you tonight, I'll have uh, myself and the Weston and Sampson uh, team to present the project for the Lakeview Avenue booster station replacement project. Um, just brief history, uh, this is a 1990 subdivision booster station that was installed. Uh, so it's roughly 30 years old. So some of the components in it are past their useful life. Um, we're intending to install a new mm. booster station right next to it and construct it while we leave the existing one online so we don't have to have a, um, a bypass installed, um, a, a water bypass system installed uh, above ground while we do the work. And we're hoping this will eliminate um, any you know, potential future failures of the, of the system um, by replacing it now. We're also looking to um, obviously remove we're not going to remove the existing pump station but we'll remove components of it um remove the hatches and then basically just infill it and it will you know stay um, below ground once we're completed and the new booster station as well will be um subsurface so you'll only see a, a hatch um for for our entrance into the uh, existing station there'll be a little bit of water main work and replacement work on the street as well um and then and some paving at the at the end of the day once the project is completed. Um, at, at this point, I'll, I'll turn over to Weston Sampson to talk about the um, the notice of intent application. Yep. Hi, Steve. Uh, it's Jeff. I'm here in person. Um, so I guess I will kick it over to Alex to uh, talk about the notice of intent application. Hello, this is Alex Gaspar um, from Weston and Sampson. I'm the one that submitted the notice of intent. As you are likely able to tell, this notice of intent was submitted for work within the riverfront area and work within the 100 foot buffer of a wetland resource area. Um, both of these resources were flagged by a wetland scientist. Um, as you'll also be able to see on the plans, compost filter tubes are being used um, around the boundary of the resource area to protect those areas. Um, and no work is being performed in the 50 foot no build zone or the 35 foot no disturb zone. Um, the area is protected by the town of Danvers. And no, no additional uh, impervious area will be added to the, the riverfront area. Okay. 
All set? Yeah. Any questions? Okay, uh, um, before I pass it off to the members of the board, just looking at the, the, uh, the pictures, uh, yep. uh, the vault that you're replacing, I mean, I'm hearing that you're going to uh, cover over the, the hatch, uh, but it looks like that's that grade. Are you going to uh, build that up a little bit there? Or, because there's also a concrete border around it. So. Yeah, so, so the hatch will be removed, um, and there's the, the top of the structure beneath grade will be removed, and then it will be filled in, um, and then you know, we'll fill it to, to existing grade and then loam and seed over it. So the vault will just be filled. It won't be just an empty That's correct, yeah. chamber yep. there. Okay, okay uh, let me pass it along to the members to see what other questions they might have. So Mike, go ahead. Yeah, on what that was being called a swap, uh, so that's being, um, is that vault connected somehow? To the water system? Yeah. It is, yeah. So you have to do, what do you do with that? Cap it off? Or? Yep, so basically you can see there, so if, I'm just going to point to it. Um, yeah, that's fine. The existing vault right there, so you can see right now we have, this is the, the existing water main in the street, so you have, uh, this is the, the suction side where it draws water from, and then it pumps it out to this side, um, and that feeds the system. So. Yeah, it's connected in, in two spots right there. Uh, the new station will also be connected in two spots. So what, what we're proposing to do, we're going to be connecting, uh, making a tap in the street for the, the suction side where it draws water off. Yeah. And then we're, we're proposing to connect the, the existing discharge piping of the existing station. And the reason we're doing that is, is to maintain the pressure zone. There's a, a check valve in the street that we, need, that we need to make sure we connect on the other side of that. Um, so that's why we're kind of coming around the back and connecting. Uh, and th this will also allow us to keep the existing station online, which, as Steve mentioned earlier, um, you know, that, that was one of the drivers for installing a new station as opposed to rehabbing the existing was, you know, this is this, this entire Lakeview Avenue and Bridal Spur area is serviced by this pump station. So right. if this is offline, they have no so can't great. flush a toilet either, probably. Can't flush a toilet, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so how, uh, how is the replacement system like and different from what's there? Sure. Um, so, so at a present, it's similar. So what, what's there right now, there's, there's four pumps. Um, there's one smaller pump. It's called a jockey pump. And it, it pretty much runs continuously and feeds you know, this, the typical average day demands of the neighborhood. During uh, and there's there's three slightly larger pumps in the station. So during that sorry, time, can you move a little closer to the mic? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you could take the mic with him, can he? That was all right. It's okay. just a little. It's taped to the ground, but just get a little closer. I'll, I'll just stand here. Yeah. Um, so during some of the higher demand periods, like you know, in the mornings when everyone's up showering, uh, getting ready for work, those some of those bigger pumps kick on to support you know, to provide additional pressure to the system. So that's the existing station. Um, one of the reasons for this, this replacement is uh, the pumps at present are stressed under some of these high flow periods and they can't quite meet the, the flows or pressure demands. Um, additionally, during you know, an instance where a fire hydrant is open and you get a really high flow, they, they can't provide sufficient fire protection under those, uh, that situation. So we are uh, beefing up the pump station. So these pumps are gonna be able to supply the, the town required fire flow, pressures, um, as well as the, the high you know, domestic demand pressures. Yeah, but initially when that was put in probably, I think the fire department has to weigh in and say it can handle the, so initially it was and now the pumps just aren't up to yeah. you know, they're, job they're, anymore. They're pretty well past their useful life. Additionally, so the station was constructed when the Lakeview Avenue development was constructed, I think the late 80s. Mm -hmm. um, since then, an additional 12 homes have been built off Bridal Spur, um, and that's mm -hmm. at a much higher elevation. So because they're at a higher elevation, the pumps have a, have a hard time right. pumping up to that elevation. And is the location of this new system, uh, where is it in proximity to what, you, what you're going to close up? So it's, it's about, uh, you know, 15 to 30 feet just towards Locust Street. Away um, from where that one is? Away from where that is. So yeah. and that's not a problem to make it to no. put it somewhere else? No? Nope, there's enough space out there. No. Well, okay. That's all I had. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Chelsea? Um, yeah, what's the, like, the time scale for this? 
So we're, we're looking to put this out to bid um, sometime mid-June. And so, so basically what we're proposing here, that the, the hatched structure that you see there, mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, pre-manufactured pump stations. So it's actually going to be built off-site and transported to the site and then installed by a contractor into the ground. So um, the benefits of that are you, you minimize the, the impact to the immediate residents. So whereas if we were to, to rehab the existing station, you know, the hatch, the, the station would be open for an extended period of time. You run the risk there of, you know, in, in the, the current construction market, you have lead time issues and, you know, you run the risk of the contractor being on site and, and impacting residents for much, much longer. Whereas in this case, once the station's built, it's trucked to the site, the contractor digs a hole, they put it in, they, they cover it up, it's much quicker. And then they work to connect it to the existing water main. I'm curious about, um, so it sounds like it would be like a very short interim between the old degradation being reseeded and the new degradation being created? It would. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had. No. And? <clears throat> no, time, timing was the only thing I was concerned with. No. Okay. Yeah. Vanessa, Thank do you, you have any questions? No, nothing additional. Okay, yeah, it looks like a pretty straightforward uh, project. Yep. Uh, are there any questions from the public? None? Um, okay, if, uh, unless anyone has something else that they need to add. I just add. have one quick question. Sure, go ahead. Um, so why did you guys change uh, from the upgrade to the replacement? Uh, what changed from the time you filed till now? We were always doing a replacement. Oh, it was always going to be a it, replacement? Yeah, it was always a replacement. The change was, so initially, I believe the initial submittal had a, a concrete generator pad, which we removed. Um, oh, yeah. So what oh, was it because of the 11% versus the 10%? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I wanted to know. So what um, was the concrete generator pad for? Is that, if there's a, a it, power so, outage, it just gives you backup? Yeah, so we initially had kind of tossed it around the idea of having a, a permanent generator on site, yeah, in case... Again, because this, so this is the end of the system. So this, this entire lake, 54 homes in this development rely on this pump station to get their water. So if the power goes down, we need a backup power source. So what we're doing is instead of having a permanent generator on site, um, we're gonna have a switch. So, you know, when, when the power does go down, the water department can come out with a, with a portable generator, hook it up, switch it over to the generator, and then that'll power the station until Danvers Municipal Light gets it back on. Is that fairly common in the town that they need to do that, or? Um, yeah, it's good practice, you know. Good practice. I, Mr. Chairman, Steve here. King, town engineer, just to respond to your question, um, you know, we obviously we have to have um, this base of uh, have these setups based on our emergency response plans, um, just in case the power does ever go out, because we know that we're not going to hit the DEP thresholds for water flow um, and pressure in that area, and obviously fire flow. So. We do make contingencies at every booster station and or a, a wastewater collection pump station um, to have a, a quick set connect generator um, attachment nearby so that if we do lose power, we can um, bring one of our portable generators over to the site to, um, to increase water pressure or, or keep our, our wastewater pump stations going in the event of a power outage. Okay, um, could just follow up with that. Yeah, go ahead, so, Mike. So maybe to Steve, can you hear me, Steve? Yep. Oh, so Steve, wh wh when these projects, uh, like the, de the developer proposes the project and they have this kind of system, does that go on, on uh, pub in a public street or is it, is it on someone's private property? Uh, how does that work? And for developers, it's typically, since they're subdividing the lots, they usually will have to um, have one lot um, separated out that will be given to the town as when we take the street as a public way. So and that way it, it would always maintain it on a, an actual town lot or they actually would put it in the actual public way if it's a large enough um, roadway. And what about this system? Where is that? I, uh, I believe that's the case here, yeah. That's the case here? Yep. So you can see I, if I, I'm just going to point to it. This is the property line. This is delineated. Oh, yeah, yep. I see. Yeah. Mm hmm all right, thank you. Yep. Okay, I, I think uh, 
We should move ahead and, and close the public hearing. So if someone can make a motion. I make a motion that we cover the <clears throat> close the public hearing for to Lakeview Avenue DEP file number 14-1383. The motion for me, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now moving on to the, the motion at hand. Uh, someone can make a motion that we issue an order of conditions, uh, please. So I'll make a motion to issue an order of conditions for to Lakeview Avenue DEP file number 14-1383. Uh, are there any additional uh, standards we want to uh, add any additional conditions no? okay Say again. I think it was pretty boilerplate yeah yeah okay motion made is there a second I second the motion all in favor aye, aye. aye. okay you're good to go thank, thank you. you guys thank you. thank you thank you thank you very much everyone Thanks, Steve Okay, uh, next up is uh, a notice of intent for 51 Pickering Street, DEP file number 14-1374. The applicant is Cheryl McDonald, and I understand that everyone concerned with this project is, is virtual. Is that correct, Georgia? That's correct, and they are here. Looks like Rich Kirby is, there he is. We can see you, Rich. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Good evening. I'm Rich Kirby from LEC and uh, representing Cheryl McDonald, the project proponent for 51 Pickering. Um, if the commission recalls, Atlantic Engineers and Survey had filed a notice of intent back in January for the uh, after the fact approval for the construction of a two family dwelling located at the site. Uh, the site was recently subdivided and uh, therefore created after the date in 1996, 97 referenced in the riverfront area regulations uh, a building a building permit had been issued for the construction of that structure but it was discovered after the building was built that the uh, riverfront area juris jurisdiction uh, occurred on the site so we were asked to get involved to see if we could um, find a way to bring the project into compliance with the riverfront area regulations and we've been working with uh, with cheryl and uh, with georgia over the past month six weeks or so to come up with a design uh, that we submitted earlier this week um georgia do you want to share your screen can i share my screen yeah well, it may be better if you try first that way we can see your mouse if you know are you sure okay with sharing um, i think so browns so that there's a white box with an arrow in the top right corner yeah i see that screen share desktop window yeah i ran into this last time um well hold on a second Let me try once more. We'll okay. share. Now I'm sharing my screen with all of you on it, and I'll mm -hmm. shift to the plan. Do you see the plan now? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, okay, great. Thanks for your patience on that. So this is the uh, the property here. It's labeled lot three on this plan. Um, and to the to the uh, southeast is Beaver Brook. And between Beaver Brook and the lot, we have a 12 unit condominium building with an access drive and parking lot. Uh, should be noted, there's no stormwater management on either of those um, for, for that development. And then there's also a single family house with a driveway and uh, some structures and, and a collection of things in the backyard there. So the plan that was submitted with the notice of intent was based on town GIS and a plan of record apparently associated with this condo. Uh, what we've done since then is actually I met the surveyor Atlantic um, engineers and survey out at the site and held the survey rod as we located the actual mean high water delineation. We wanted to get an accurate uh, representation of where that mean high water boundary is. There's not a whole lot of room for interpretation. Much of Beaver Brook on the um, west side is retained with a stone retaining wall and then a pretty steep slope um, as you extend out to the back. But as we uh, 
as we did that, the, um, the surveyor then modified the 200 foot riverfront area boundary and it changed the numbers slightly, uh, but enough to make a difference. So you can see here in the, uh, I can't zoom in, here we go, let's do this. So the riverfront area tables are here. The total riverfront area on the site is 11,623. Therefore, 10% of the riverfront area on the site is 1162. So we, what we did was we worked with the um, project engineer to, why can't I come, go back over here? Sorry, I'm just having some difficulty moving the screen around. <laughs> um, what we did was, you know, the structure is where it is currently. There's a, um, a 10 by 12 patio proposed off the back of the structure. And we had a, uh, a full, full width two car driveway um, going in. What we've done is we've reduced the footprint of the driveway. Most of the reduction is outside the riverfront, but you know, obviously we need access to the two car garage. So this portion of, uh, of driveway is necessary to access that. But the driveway, <clears throat> the structure and the patio um, all equal 919 square feet, which is uh, less than the 1162 uh, that's allowable. And so <clears throat> we have a small lawn area proposed off the back of the patio, which I will get to in a moment. The rest of the site, you know, all this green area is um, is undisturbed. It's basically a grassland or the further back you go, the more um, the more staghorn sumac is back there and a couple of other couple of other shrubs in this zone. This is mostly grassland up in here. This is a loam pile that was excavated for the foundation that's going to be removed and uh, and this will be restored once we intercept the original um, topsoil we'll be restoring that and we put together a planting plan, plan that I'll get to in a minute. In addition to, you know, obviously protecting this riverfront area that's naturally vegetated and will be restored where the loam pile is, we're also proposing to preserve this additional site, uh, portion of the site, which is outside the riverfront area, but we do have some conservation markers proposed just to, you know, a good faith effort to try and preserve as much of the land as possible. Uh, since the application, Atlantic Design also put together a stormwater infiltration system to collect the roof runoff and, and put it into uh, an infiltration chamber in the back. The soils at this site are, are really nice, uh, coarse um, sands and gravels, so the system doesn't have to be that big to accommodate uh, the roof runoff. The planting plan and we're rotating 90 degrees here so this is pickering street over here you can see the house um, here's the driveway here's the 200 foot riverfront area so we have a couple of different shades in here this section here is the existing uh, land that was not disturbed and that will remain protected within the riverfront this is the land that was not disturbed that will remain protected that's outside the riverfront this is the loam pile that will be removed um, and reseeded with the conservation seed mix provided by Ernst Conservation Seeds. And then here we have the, uh, the planting regimen for the area around the house. And I'm going to zoom in to that so you can get a better sense of what it is we're proposing. So there are a few different cover types proposed. Um, we, we do have an actual, you know, small lawn area, 240 square feet to provide, you know, a usable lawn space adjacent to the patio in and out of the house. This pink hatched area will be uh, a meadow seed mix. It's the Ernst conservation mix that I men mentioned before. There's a bit of it out front um, along the side of the house and then toward the back. That effectively will be a naturalized meadow. It'll be mowed, you know, twice a year in the in the spring and fall, just to keep the invasives out and keep it um, as a meadow, providing you know access to the house for uh, maintenance, etc. And then we also have um, these areas where we're proposing native shrubs and ground cover plants. We have two zones: one right adjacent to the driveway, and then another zone back here. Uh, we have the 
planting detail, which shows the um, size, specifications, and quantities of the uh, of the shrubs to be proposed, as well as uh, within those shrub planting areas, we've got 40 hay scented fern uh, and a minimum of 200 plugs from uh, these are generally more shade tolerant plugs, white wood aster, blue wood aster to go in those uh, those planting areas. So really, what we're what we're trying to accomplish here is you know to put the project in a um, sorry, I'm trying to get the, the zoom thing out again. Uh, put the project in a in a in a place where it meets the riverfront area performance standards. We're under the 10% with the structure patio and driveway and lawn area off the back. And um, let me try this. And, uh, you know, under, um, sorry, and, and, and restoring the land adjacent that's within the riverfront, as well as additional land beyond the riverfront area. And we have the conservation markers to, to, marcate, to marcate that area. So I, th I think that covers where we're at at this point. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions or further discuss the, the planting plan, um, whatever, uh, whatever the commission prefers. Thanks. Uh, we appreciate you guys, uh, you know, doing the, making the effort to, uh, to really fit it in under the, the numbers that uh, our bylaw is requiring. So uh, thanks for that. Uh, let me just pass it along. I'm sure there's a lot of questions, so uh, we'll just uh, one by one, and we'll, uh, we'll get those questions asked and answered. Uh, so, Mike, uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, initially, so when these lots were proposed, and, I, and it looks like uh, it was 2021, is that right? Uh, I believe so, Cheryl. Uh, the last John year, was and then the first place you went was to the, the planning board. You know, I wasn't involved with the project then. Oh. Um, I'm going to stop sharing, and uh, I, 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 maybe it's a question for staff. I don't know, but we had talked. You know, in the past, we talked about some coordination between the various boards. So, how did this get by uh, that you were able to start building in an area where there was a river? I, I'm happy to address that because yes. I believe I have brought it up with the board before. It was um, there are a number of checks and balances the applicant has to take, and I, at the end of the day, they were issued a building permit. Um, the applicant wasn't aware they're in the riverfront area. Um, those are the things that were considered. But having found out that work had started, um, Cheryl then was told to file an application after the fact. So. Um, at that time, there was new positions in town hall, um, but we again we are working on a permanent. I would just say somebody. I know we talked before about having more coordination between the boards, so this kind of thing doesn't happen. Yeah, and I would say in this scenario, of course, every situation's a bit different. And like I, I think I had said last time, you know, when you go to Woodvale, it's very obvious where the resource area is. I mean, the street Frostfish Brook runs through the neighborhood. Um, when you're standing on a lot of the sites we have in front of us in this situation for you know someone that's not in the conservation area you know the building inspector or someone like that the resource area where it was located I mean there was a number of factors uh, but at the end of the day the building permit was issued but that also doesn't preclude the applicant from having to seek permits from other right. boards they also got um, a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I believe That's they had to go to Planning Board for an a and r So they went through that process. Um, yeah, I can answer that as best I can. Okay, so hopefully that won't happen again. Hopefully and that won't happen. I mean, again. I know that area. You know, that used to people used to fish in there for pickerel. That was. I mean, it's well known the, the streams. It's in pretty that visible that it's a wetland area. It's a you know to me it is. Yeah. So I don't know how it got missed. But anyway, so the areas um, uh, where you had proposed lawn, is that where most of the uh, remediation or will take place where you'll will now go to some uh, more uh, environmental type grasslands? Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the area before, uh, as, as uh, Cheryl and, and the site contractor, I had, I had not seen the site before the structure was built. 
But as I indicated, you know, this back area here, it's, it's not as though they, you know, cleared a forest to build this to build this structure. You know, this is all grassland with uh, varying heights of staghorn sumac. Um, the farther back you go, the taller the sumac it is. So it seems to me that somebody maintained this area as a field until relatively recently and then kind of just maintained less and less of it. So once you get to the loam pile, it's it's mostly grasses back here. So I, I would imagine that the rest of the lot was probably similarly vegetated. But that's a long answer to your question. Yes, in, in where where we have this lawn area, you know, this modest lawn, beyond that, we're gonna have the conservation seed mix um, as well as the uh, the areas of shrub plantings uh, and the and the herbaceous plantings. So we're, we're trying to make it function, uh, provide the function and value, restore the function and value of the riverfront area, but also have it be, you know, somewhat walkable um, by the uh, by the owner that lives there. Okay, and uh, you're proposing uh, several different types of plantings. How, how will that be uh, maintained? How will they be identified so somebody doesn't get confused about what is what? Sure. So, so we show we show the plan here, and we do have um, these conservation markers along the the back of. Really, the intention was here to have these conservation markers in place. So, you know, anybody that's the person that lives in this uh, structure, presumably, if this is going to be lawn, they're not mowing their lawn beyond the area that they're supposed to. Excuse me for just one sec. Could you just show us the drawing? You said. Where's oh, this, uh, sure. Is that up to him, Georgia, or is it up to you? Uh, that's up to him. But I'm also happy to pull it up if you want. Yeah, because what's... Uh, yeah, because you're referring to the drawing, but we're just right. we're yeah. looking at you. What's oh, you're not seeing the drawing? I'm sorry. I, I thought I was sharing my screen again. <laughs> yeah. um, so is the idea that the the, these grasses that are being planted, that they not to be mowed? Yeah, so when he yeah. pulls up the plan, you'll see there's yeah, there's, mode th there's, there's certain areas that have fields. certain maintenance yeah. schedules. So Will they become fields? Or uh, so the I'll have home. Rich yeah. Yeah. explain, but some are to be mowed only twice a year and some are to right. never be mowed. Right. Rich, if you don't mind so zooming in, Rich, and um, maybe yeah, eliminating sure. that right side. There we go. Or going full screen, whatever works. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the best I oh, can. Oh, that's good. Here. That's better. <laughs> uh, right here, is this good? Yeah, that's yeah. great. Okay, so so um, my cursor is outlining the the house. Right here, this is the the structure, and then this hatched area is the driveway to provide access to the two car garage. This is the ten by twelve patio that's proposed off the back of the house. And this is a 240 square foot lawn area that you know would be maintained as regular lawn. Um, the pink hatch that you see, I'm outlining it here. This pink hatch that occurs along the rear, um, and then in this section here, that is the conservation seed mix that will be mowed twice annually um, in order to maintain you know a meadow. That's still, you know, like I said, walkable. They could throw a ladder up next to the house if they needed to, you know, replace a window or something like that. But it still provides, you know, uh, the function and value to the riverfront. And then beyond that meadow area, we have the um, the proposed shrub plantings and herbaceous plugs, the white and blue wood aster that would be planted um, in this area in here, this L-shaped area, and then also uh, along the driveway here. So as a meadow, it'll be just left to its to itself. It's not going to require watering and fertilizing and or any of that, correct? Yeah, that's correct. It's, it's it shouldn't shouldn't require any of that sort of thing. Just uh, just a twice annual mowing um, to keep it to keep it a meadow and keep the invasives out. Thank you. All set, Mike. Yes. Okay, uh, Chelsea. Yeah, so um, anytime we have one of these like big rewilding projects, uh, I want to know who's going to be in charge of ensuring that like the plantings and all this new stuff actually take and grow. Mm -hmm. Well, if the commission, you know, wants to require that uh, as part of a you know special yeah. condition and an order of conditions that the, the planting area be installed and, and monitored for, you know, usually two years is the monitoring period to make mm -hmm. sure everything takes. 
-hmm. and the um, the area is established, um, you know, I think I think Cheryl would be open to that. Right. Well, that was all I was wondering mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Okay. I'll yep. say Chelsea. Yep. Uh, Ann. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> you talked about uh, the conservation f uh, flagging. Whereabouts was that? Whereabouts were you? Sure. So the original plan that Atlantic submitted, the brook, Beaver Brook was never delineated, right? The mean high water line right. was not delineated. Um, the plan that they submitted was based on uh, the town GIS mm -hmm. and uh, apparently the, the plan of record for this 12 unit condo building here with the parking lot. Um, <clears throat> and looking at that plan, it didn't appear that it was delineated either. So I met the surveyor out at the site and we collected the incidental survey uh, information associated with the high water mark. And so I held the survey rod basically at the mean high water elevation. Um, the first three or four points were along a retaining wall. There's a stone retaining wall along that side of the brook. So nearly vertical, I mean, very little room for, you know, um, the high water rank can't be anywhere else <laughs> other than the retaining wall. Um, these last two points, you, they're on a pretty steep slope, mm -hmm. and we observed evidence of um, of scour and and uh, basically the, the shift between predominantly aquatic and predominantly terrestrial land. So that's where those points were were derived from. So it was very close. It changed the riverfront area on the site by like 76 square feet or something like that. So not a not a big difference. But that's how we uh, that's how we determined the extent of riverfront area on the site. Okay, okay. And for the the lawn and meadow area, um, is there a distinction? Is there a, a curbing? Um, uh, you know, in, in other words, how is the lawn and the meadow going to be? Right. No, that's a good that's a good point. Um, is that Cheryl, going to be flagged? What, what do you? Yeah, what what are you thinking? I mean, we could do we could do a small fence, um, along that zone between the patio up to this corner and then over, over to here. Um, mm -hmm. Post and rail fence, a picket fence, just a wooden picket fence along that. Do you have, do you have any thoughts on that or a preference? Uh, are you asking me? Yes. Oh, I would think something. very small and kind of rustic yeah so we could do like a, a post and rail fence with uh mm. you know two 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 rails like the um yeah like yeah. you'd yeah. see you know in a, in a pasture be, or something yeah. yeah as long as you yeah anything that would make the difference between the two areas so that you don't have yeah. the mix there okay all right that looks good yeah that's a good point we, we could i think we could do that Right, very good, thank you. That's it? Yep. Uh, Vanessa. Sorry, I was fumbling to unmute. Um, I agree with what Ann said and continuing along that thought, would you also plan to continue the fence along the 200 foot line where it coincides with the adjacent lawn? Yes, right there. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, th I think we could do that. <clears throat> I, I, I think, think without that physical barrier over time, it could get just yeah. encroached upon and that just right. makes it really clear. Mm -hmm. And I'm anticipating you would need some sort of a gate to get in for the twice annual mowing. Right. Well, they could, depending on where they kept the, the lawn mower. I mean, I suppose they could access it from the, you know, this is a walkout basement here. They could access it here or if they hired somebody, you know, they could, a, a, the landscape a landscaper could come in and bring the you know they could mow this section and then they could come in here and mow mow around the house uh richard so where would the end of the fence be so the fence do you see my cursor yes we would follow from this corner of the patio mm -hmm. to this corner of the lawn to this edge of the riverfront boundary up to here Okay. So it'd be three sections. One, two, three. Three. Okay. Thank you. 
And then also um, near the driveway, you've got that little polygon of seed mix. Yes, yes right, should... right there. So what yep. is in that white area adjacent to the driveway? What's proposed to be in there? So that would also be lawn, presumably, and that's outside the 200 riverfront. So I suppose we should have one more section of fence right here. Another suggestion is you could just do the seed mix on the whole thing, and then it has the same maintenance. <laughs> it might just be less confusing for the owner of like having. Yeah. I, mean, it's a, I, I just I, I'll, I leave it, I'll leave it to Cheryl. Um, yeah. I think they might just to have some sort of, you know, just with the curb appeal, it might be nice to have the manicured lawn or some landscape mm -hmm. bed or something like that yeah. sure. right adjacent to the driveway. So I'm thinking maybe a, that same fence could be installed right along here to differentiate between a lawn or, or mulch <laughs> landscape bed or whatever the case may be for this section versus the, um, the seed mix over here. Okay. And then I, I don't see the elevations on here. So that retaining wall, is the driveway higher than or lower than the adjacent bed? It, it's, it's higher than, it's not much. Um, you can see elevation 46 here, 47 here. It's just to limit any grading that would have to occur in order to reconcile the elevation difference between the, the driveway and the land adjacent. If you go out there, it's, it's very similar. The driveway is built up a little bit, but we didn't want to have, we're limiting our footprint, right? So we didn't want to have any grading down into this zone. The retaining wall will also function as a, you know, further function as the physical barrier between the, again, the usable space within the riverfront and the restored section. Okay. Um, I think that's, that's all I have. I, I get, well, actually, I guess, so you think that these pink hatched areas in terms of being mowed will be accessible? Cause I can see they're kind of interspersed with some other planting beds and, but it should be. Yeah, we wanted, we wanted to, we wanted to have, um, put some planting beds in here. Again, the native shrubs with the ferns and the ground cover plants to try and provide, you know, restore some of the function and value of you know presumably there were some you know shrubs in here uh, again it, it appears as though it was mostly grass and, and maintained up until somewhat recently but <clears throat> we wanted to do that but also provide you know some usable space right you know if, if, if this is the lawn area here um you still want the people to be able to you know walk through walk around the house etc um if need be all right, I think that's all I have. All right, uh, thanks, Vanessa. Um, as I look at this, is this uh, structure a two units? Are there two townhouses there? Or? It's a two family structure, yes. It's a duplex. Yeah. And, duplex. and this is the, uh, the one side um, mm -hmm. with its own driveway and patio. And then this is the, the other side uh, with the driveway and, and patio. So there's going to be just one owner. Um, I, I, I don't know, Cheryl, do you, I think, do you anticipate two owners, one owner for this unit and one owner for this unit? I anticipate two owners. That's okay. Thinking. So it'll be, is the split, uh, all on one property yeah, looks for like the, it. um, the, the area that we're talking about now? Looks like so, so the, the riverfront boundary, you know, is the blue line. Um, this is the split within the structure between the two units. I imagine, you know, this person is going to have, you know, a, a larger lawn area, right, to use. Um, and then this, the person that owns this house is. Um, Are there going to be two pieces of property? Yeah, will this, be a, con will this be a condex with uh, common areas? Like, is that going to be like a two unit condo? It, it'll be a two unit, two unit condo. condo. But so which, which unit would have responsibility for uh, maintaining the, the twice a year mowing? It's going to be this one there. Yeah. Probably this, probably this unit, right, Cheryl? That would be my guess. Yeah. Well, the, the okay. guess isn't, well, it's, yeah, we, we don't know really better in. than that. Yeah. Yes, it would be the responsibility of the right-hand unit. Does that have a number or a designation? 
at 51-2 51 Pickering Street. Two. So this, this would be 51-1 and this would be 51-2? No, it's green. We got 5150. Okay, it, um, well, I'm presuming that uh, this property you want to sell uh, before two full growing seasons are up. Is that right? Yes. Uh, so we have to determine uh, some uh, how the responsibility for this uh, uh, goes along with the property uh, changing hands. Yeah. So, uh, in other words, uh, we have to see two full growing seasons to make sure the plantings are established, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah. so that's, I mean, we can't issue a certificate of well, compliance. Before we could issue a certificate of compliance, so. So that means that the owner, the new property owner, has to come in for the certificate of compliance. My concern is that they're, they're not gonna be aware of all these conditions and just totally uh, ignore what's being proposed here. Well, won't this be recorded uh, with the sp conditions? Or We've no? had a lot of, well, if the com the order of conditions will be recorded and the buyer will be made aware, but we've seen that happen a lot of times where they read the 80 conditions. That means they need to sit down with the plan and be made aware. Um, the applicant could do their due diligence, but that doesn't mean mm. we have the applicant before us. So. That's true. One, one option, we, we run into this a lot. Um, there's a lot of restorative projects that accompany redevelopment of sites within riverfront or within buffer zones in certain towns. And oftentimes what happens is there's an agreement between the seller and the buyer where a certain amount of money goes into escrow, right? And that money in escrow covers the cost of the, um, the, supervision and monitoring of the restoration area and either the seller keeps the responsibility in this case cheryl and she says okay we're going to put this money into escrow i'm going to take care of the planting and the monitoring and the supervision and after two years i'll get the full certificate of compliance and when i do and it's recorded at the registry then the money in escrow is returned alternatively the buyer takes the responsibility and then the buyer is responsible for you know maintaining monitoring supervising etc um and and then once that work is done they go for their uh cert full certificate of compliance is that something you put in a purchase and sale agreement well i don't um i, th I imagine the real estate agents or attorneys do did you <laughs> But I, I don't know if it's in the in the agreement or if in the purchase and sale or if there was a memorandum of understanding or something to that effect. Well, okay. As I look at this drawing, um, you know, if I uh, can draw a line from the the farther the higher up driveway straight back. Um, this one. Right. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, uh, straight back and here. And then. You get into, so they, they have a nice green proposed lawn for their back. That's right. And then the other unit has, uh, you know, 200 square feet or so within the riverfront. And then another, I guess, 50 or so square feet that's outside of the riverfront. Is that a good this guess? This little section here, right? Right, yeah. that little triangle, yeah. <clears throat> Is it, uh, and that's the only lawn on the property. Is that right? That's correct. I mean, is someone going to well, own not, a, not, not, you know, not including in this section up here might also be lawn that's Maybe. outside the riverfront. Right, but so in terms of, you know, backyard space, you're correct. It's, it's there's this, this two little this parcels way. of lawn. Is it worthwhile to own a, a lawnmower or or <laughs> should uh, should we just have this meadow mix be the entire mower. piece of property? Just a push mower. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that I think they, you know, Cheryl would like for the buyer or the owner of this property to have the opportunity to have, you know, a, a modest lawn area around the patio for, you know, lawn chairs. Uh, yep, I, I understand that. This is a, you know, but, uh, legal. My concern is that uh, once this property is sold and it's two or three years get behind us, 
that this new homeowner is just going to totally ignore what we're talking about here and just, you know. Well, that's why we want the fence, I think. Uh, that's yeah. why you suggested right. the, yeah, fence, the fence, isn't it? Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we so do have, have a fence proposed along this, yeah. along this zone here and then again over right, here, so too. I mean, that, that, right? that certainly is a Could risk. I mean, that that's a risk with what's beyond it. Yeah. yeah. Any, no mowing beyond this. That's right. Yeah. You need signage. Yeah. I was going to say about adding conservation markers to the proposed fence because we have the conservation markers along the backage of the property, yeah. but could we, we add were just to saying the fence that too? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we could we could eliminate these two conservation markers, move this one to this corner, right, right here, and put another one here and another one here. Mm -hmm. And why and would we eliminate fence. one? What's that? Why would you eliminate one? Oh, I'm saying I'm saying eliminate these two because if, if you're going to have these conservation markers down here, why would you have them no, here as well? In other words, we'll take this one, yeah. move it, move it to this corner right. right here. Oh, okay. Relocate so that them. Way you, yeah. You, Repurpose them. Sorry, am I? Am I? I don't mean to. I don't. I don't want to interrupt anybody. <laughs> nope, that's fine. No, no, no. So, I think we understand what you're we got, doing. You're going to relocate the markers so they'll show yeah, up on the fence. Keep this one. Move this one down here. Mm -hmm. Add another one right here. And another one right here. And we'll. we'll what have about your other area up towards? Uh, what about your other little area? Up front. Up Go, front. Over here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we could add one over here too with yeah. the fence. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm drawing a blank. What I was thinking next. No. Oh. Public hearing. Uh, no. Uh, and did I hear that? Uh, you know, we when an, when anyone's proposing, uh, you know, to make some plantings, uh, uh, we would like uh, some sort of. Uh, performance bond associated with that. So I think that was mentioned earlier, but I'm not sure if we're getting into uh, details about that. Well, that works. That kind of ties into what they're talking about, having escrow money. So performance bond well, would be a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So would we want a bond to be part of like a special condition? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the, the escrow money is, is just a mechanism that other clients of mine have used in the past. I mean, whatever, whatever agreement is between Cheryl and the buyer of this property, then, you know, that's their business. That's right. their agreement. Um, but if you want to require a performance bond um, until the certificate of compliance is issued after the two years, then, you know, obviously that's within your jurisdiction to do so. Well, staff has suggested 7,500. Is that enough? Uh, so that's the number I had based on. Um, we had a residential property up on Carroll Way that provided a $7,500 bond. And just for reference, we just had a commercial property doing a drive through with um, buffer zone mitigation. So neither of those were wetland mitigation, it was buffer zone plantings. Um, and that one was $40,000. That was well above. So I. I had estimated that 7,500, not based on the plantings that they will physically be planting, but just based on the project size, the scope, how long we have to wait, making sure, and the history with the site, knowing it's going to be transitioning hands, holding that. I, I, I thought 7,500 was appropriate, but the board can change that at their will. So that more or less would cover the, the cost of doing it? if the town had to do it. Rich, are you able to speak to what you believe the cost would be for the seed? I, I think the big cost here would be the, shrub, the shrubs you're proposing. Yeah, I mean, wholesale, you know, these, these native shrubs, you know, this, this isn't like you're going to a, you know, a, a, a big, um, you're not buying specimen blueberries, right, for 50 or $100 a piece. These are native shrubs, and, and there's only certain nurseries that specialize in them. Usually they're 10 or $15 wholesale. The seed mix, I think, is probably $30 a pound. So in terms of your hard costs, there's really not much to it. You know, there's obviously going to be some labor, the landscape crew that has to put the plants in and, and you know, sow the seed, et cetera. 
um, there's probably some cost at that. I, I would think that 7,500, I, I would think would be plenty. Um, but you know, we don't we don't cost this this these types of projects out too much. Um, but I am familiar with the cost of the price uh, of the cost of the seed mix and the the shrubs, which shouldn't be too much. Can you explain to me how the bond works? Um, I'm happy to. So after once everything is completed and you believe you can come in for the certificate of compliance. So if, tonight, if the commission issues an order of condition, there will be a number of requirements you need to close out the permit. And those are the ones you're most likely familiar with as built plans, evidence that everything was followed according to plan. And then also we're going to need sufficient evidence that everything is established. So that's after the two year, the two growing seasons have passed and there's full meadow, the fences are up, the no disturb posts are up. Should you come in for sort of a compliance or we never hear from you or a new owner takes place and nothing ever happens in the back, that money will then be used to put up the fencing to prevent mowing or alteration in those areas. The money would be used to then the town would have to plant the seeding or hire someone to do the work. Um, but if you come in after the two growing seasons and everything looks great, then once the commission issues that certificate of compliance the next day, we would issue that back. The technicalities of you having to write a check or get a bond with your bank or ha what that performance guarantee looks like, we can figure that out outside of the meeting. So the two growing seasons would be 2022 and 2023? So it depends on when this planting, when you guys put this in and when you get started. Yeah, if, we get the, if we get the plantings in within the next month or so, um, I would think that, you know, we wanted, we'd be in for the spring planting and then we could monitor for 2022 and then we could monitor for 2023 and then the fall of 2023, provided everything, you know, is established and is looking good and has been properly um, allowed to establish and be maintained, then we would be complete in the fall of uh, 2023. Thank you. And just to clarify, Georgia, uh, looking down the road, the the new homeowner would have to come into us for the certificate of compliance. That's correct. And mm -hmm. and in that effort, I mean, we would have right now or Cheryl, the LLC, the applicant providing that seventy five hundred. So it, yes, it would be up to the applicant to make that effort. But in that, Cheryl would. I, I, the reason they ask, I want the the new owners to come in front of us and yep. make sure that they understand all the conditions that we're, we're spelling out Absolutely. Tonight. And okay. it also, I just want to note, um, while I have you, that I wrote down a number of the changes um, that need to be made to the plan. So if the commission does issue an order tonight, I would just ask that they um, put in there that Rich Kirby would provide an updated plan showing the changes discussed tonight. Given they are minimal, you know, adding fencing along those lines that um, Rich had pointed out and then relocating those no disturb markers if we can have a plan that clearly identifies that, um, that would be great. Okay. Um, okay. Um, does anyone from the board have further questions or comments? No. I'm just no. can I just see the distinction between the 830 and the 1800? Isn't there the where it says 830 feet of natural area with no no mowing? Uh, oh, um, sure. Hold on. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. You're looking at the um, yeah. So it's the one. Plan? Uh, you're the, the, plan? the land. Yeah, landscaping plan. That one. So he's talking about the um, the natural area where no mowing is to be allowed at all, and then the natural seed mix area where you mow twice a year. Where on those the two plan. Correct. Yep. No, on the one we have. So the natural area is the, the green. So okay. where is the so, area with no so, mowing? Yeah, so this this is the plan that the project engineer provided to us in order for us to prepare the planting plan. Once we received this plan, we realized that we had roughly 240 square feet to play with in terms of us having a lawn area back here. So we will have Atlantic engineers modify this plan such that the numbers over here, um, the numbers that you're looking at match the numbers on the planting plan. 
Okay, but I would just like to see where the 830 feet lie. Yeah, the numbers do match. Sorry, it's the you one's like a pink hatch and one's an orange hatch on the landscaping plan. Oh, okay. On the landscaping plan? Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, like I just I the two, the pink area and the orange area. Yep. If you move over to the right a little bit. Yep. No, my screen is not allowing me to. All right, so oh, I guess perfect. I see that. So is that that lump of land up there so this oh, yeah, this is the orange. existing the loam pile, right pile that's out at the site now right? so and that's not to be mowed at all that's correct no. so this, how this do we this establish area, that, that doesn't zone, happen we had just we were just gonna let it be right i know but how will the person that's mowing the twice annually know not to mow that i think it's going to be both well i guess we'll have to have be, two I we need we'll something to there conservation We'll have to keep these conservation markers here and have these say no disturbance. Right. right in the no disturb area. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we'll have these ones that say annual mowing, twice annual mowing. Bi only. Right, uh, yep. Biannual. Is it biannual mowing, right? Twice a year works. Yeah. Out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Just to clear that up. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yeah, good point. Thanks. Anyone else have questions or comments? No. Uh, how about the public? Any questions from the public? Okay. So I guess our next step is to close the public hearing. So someone can make a motion to that effect. I make Please. a motion that we close the public hearing for 15 Pickering Street DEP file number 14-1374. Motion has been made to close the hearing. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, let's uh, move forward to uh, if we want to uh, issue an order of conditions or not. If someone can. Do we need permission. to do a separate vote on the bond? Correct. Or is that just yeah. a condition? No, so if you make a motion to um, what you're going to set the bond at and then vote on that and then issue the order of conditions. All right, so I would. Uh, make a motion uh, that the board vote to establish a performance bond in the amount of $7,500 for the planting and seeding work proposed by the applicant. And just and returnable when the certificate of compliance yeah. is issued. Which would be returnable upon issuance of a complete uh, certificate of compliance. Motion been made. Is there a second? I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Go ahead. All right. No. All right. Um, I make a motion that uh, we issue an order of conditions uh, for uh, 15, 51 Pickering Street, and I think this was 51-2, uh, was it? Yeah, 51 uh, I'll get to that. For 51 Pickering Street, and it's DEP file number 14-1374 with the following uh, conditions, that the uh, applicant establish uh, no disturb markers along the 830 foot square uh, area that's designated as no mowing allowed, that the applicant uh, locate, that the applicate, applicant install um, a post and beam or some similar type of fencing along the area of lawn to demarcate the area that's to be mowed twice a year uh, versus that small lawn area, both near the front of the house, the small area, and the additional area around the patio, so that, that uh, anyone using, owning, or using the property knows that they uh, cannot mow uh, that uh, meadow area but twice a year, and that they cannot mow the no disturb at all. Uh, that the applicant post, uh, as stated, would be posting a bond in the amount of $7,500. Uh, and that uh, monitor the, the green area that the air uh, as far as the choice of uh, plantings how is that being made um, so it'd be the plantings that were provided and suggested on the plan mm -hmm. uh, that yep. the plant that the uh, there'll be no change from those uh, the plantings that are shown on the plan if there's any change the applicant would come back mm -hmm. uh, to discuss that all right that's the motion with the conservation markers do we need to Did we talk? Yeah, yeah, I think okay. I said that, the conservation markers to be placed. And won't he need to update the plan to reflect the fence? Uh, 
as built on and the fencing to show the fencing. Are, they'll provide um, updated, updated plan. plans prior to construction. Yeah. Installing fencing is, is not an issue with uh, within our, our area either. No, but we want to make sure they're installed in the right spots between right. the yeah. no mow, the mow. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. We yeah. want to make sure the markers are in and all right. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. You get all that? Yeah. <laughs> we got all that? We got it recorded on YouTube, if anything. <laughs> but yes, okay, we, I have that all. All right. Um, okay, that's the Just, motion. Uh, I have one quick comment before we ask for a second to continue. A lot of times we see where uh, people just have an order of conditions and they don't come in for the certificate of compliance, in which time all of this could go south. its own merry way south. <laughs> How do we? We would then use the bond money to complete the work. Yes. So after three years, when the order of conditions expires. If nothing's been done, if they don't come in for certificate compliance, we'll the commission would use that seventy-five hundred dollars to hire a company of their choosing. Would we have to vote on that? That that's what having the bond, and then that's you guys the voted on the general bond condition. Okay, so. but at the three-year mark, that will happen. But he has a good point because we don't really have a tickler system that makes that pop up. We um, would in the accounting system, and knowing that the the town's not just going to let a check sit there. You know, over there is internal systems to make sure. You after know how we've had people time. come in 10, 15 years later for a certificate of compliance. Right. Oh yeah, but they may not have had seventy five hundred dollars. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Georgia. Um, so the motion's been made with uh, certain conditions attached. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, is there any old or new business that we need to consider? Oh, don't we need to continue? Thank you. Oh, Thank geez, you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I skipped three because I knew. Thank you, Rich and Cheryl. They Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good night. Have Have a good night. Good luck. Uh, number three is uh, we've already opened this hearing, so we have to vote to continue. But 150 Endicott Street, DEP file number 14-1381. Um, the applicant has requested uh, to continue to May 26, 2022. Uh, and before we vote on that, Georgia, do you just want to give the board a, a, a summary of the, yeah. the peer review uh, sure. solicitation? Um, so I sent the ANRAD application out to um, three consultants, and those consultants are ones the commission typically sees. So I believe that was Bill Manuel, um, Hancock Engineering, and um, Mike DeRosa with DeRosa Environmental. So I had provided them the plans and said, if you are interested, um, please let me know in a week. And then if they are, I send them kind of a scope of services saying, provide me a, a quote with what you would require for attending a meeting and doing the delineation in field. Um, so I'd asked for them to respond by the first week of May with if they're interested and how much um, they would charge. And then once we get those responses back, we'll choose a consultant and then get the process going. And then we'll do a site visit with the commission, the consultant, and then the applicant's consultant to walk the wetland line at site. Good. Thanks. Uh, since it's still an open hearing, is there any uh, public comment? None? Uh, okay. If someone can make a motion, we'll continue. I'll make a motion to continue the hearing for 152 Endicott Street, DEP file number 14-1381. Uh, is there a second? I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now, is there any old or new business? Georgia? Yes, so I do have um, some new business that came in today. Just, it's an update, but I am looking for the commission's uh, support and if they would be in support of signing a letter to a company um, a grant. So DPW, Sharon Clement in uh, Department of Public Works, she is submitting um, a grant under the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, MVP program. You guys a may request for a grant or? Uh, sorry, she's submitting an application. Oh, yeah. um, I'm just going to read this sentence because it, it really sums it up perfectly. But uh, we asked for an approval of funds to allow our engineer Tetra Tech, who the town will be hiring if they get this grant, to conduct a river hydraulic analysis to understand the factors causing the erosion of the shoreline along John George Park 
in the Crane River Marina, as well as the shoreline along adjacent private properties. Mm -hmm. um, so Good. for a number of years, the town has tried to address the erosion at Crane River Marina. They've done a number of different techniques, natural, hardscape. So this grant application would, if awarded, um, would allow the town to hire someone to do some in-depth research. How much? Um, so I had a feeling the commission would have some good questions. So I, I have asked them how much would it cost, when would it be awarded if you do receive the grant, what does the pro end product look like. Um, so they will be getting back to me, so next meeting, happy to give that to you. But if, if anyone is opposed to uh, Peter, the chair, signing the letter, now would, would be a good time to, to discuss it. No, I feel no. Like, actually I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Me yeah. too. I mean, I've, that's been a question on my mind um, b because I've noticed that um, Salem and Beverly have gotten together about the erosion issues on the river from their and the, on their shores mm -hmm. and are taking action s together to solve those problems. So yeah. we're trying. Yeah, we're up. We're upstream, but we still have pro the same. Yeah, this one's been kicked around issues. for a while. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. You no, know, mm -hmm. several times in town meeting it's been discussed. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure, and that's the that only that. input for us is that we say that we agree with the effort. Yeah, so I just need you to sign, but I... You need to sign your life away. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Prick your finger, it's in blood. Yeah. Yes. And that's all. That's it? <laughs> that's okay, cool. good, thank you. Uh, unless anyone else has any, has any other business that we need to bring up? No? No. Okay, uh, someone make a motion we adjourn? I make a motion that we adjourn the Conservation Commission meeting of April 28th. Motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good night, all. And remember to vote next Tuesday. I'll be holding a sign. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, can't done it. <laughs>